Still with Morning Live, thanks for being with us this morning. Now, the Standing Committee on Public Accounts, uh, SCOPA, says it will write to President Cyril Ramaphosa to come and provide information to the committee with regard to a leaked audio associated with the president. Now, in the leaked uh, voice uh, uh, tape, uh, it's alleged that uh, Ramaphosa's voice is on it, and in it is made an admission in a private meeting of the African National Congress that funds were used for the ANC's 27 elective conference, uh, but that he decided to deflect public attention in order to protect the image of the party. Now, other entities to be called by SCOPA are the uh, State Security Agency, uh, the SSA, the South African Public Protector, as well as the Auditor General. And the decision was taken yesterday during ANC MP uh, and now suspended SCOPA committee members' uh, presentations before the committee, uh, Mervyn Dirks. Now, Dirks had written to the committee to ask ask them uh, to ask Ramaphosa to provide information. Political analyst uh, Professor Lesiba Tifo from the University of uh, South Africa joins us now virtually for further discussion. Professor, good morning. Thanks so much for being with us on Morning Live. Sakina and the viewers. So we know and we saw, we heard this leaked audio. Um, it's been over a month now. And uh, quite curiously, there hasn't seemed to be any, anyone who has reliably established the veracity of this particular leaked audio. We haven't heard anything from the African National Congress um, denying or affirming its uh, a veracity. What do you make of that in and of itself, Professor? Yes, Sakina, what a good question. Um, there was an absence of revulsion from the public let alone the ANC. Are we numbed? Are we gotten so to a point where we no longer care, we no longer feel like uh, we should really raise our voice, whatever the consequences? Maybe indeed we have been subjected to this thought for far too long, that people have been numbed, that people care less, and just hoping that perhaps one day a savior, a redeemer will emerge from one quarter to save this country. Look. I really understand where Ramaphosa comes from. And I like the fact that he, he's, he's more complicated and sophisticated in his language. But he speaks the language of Jacob Zuma. Jacob Zuma said the ANC comes first. And Ramaphosa says the ANC won't collapse on my watch. And he says to me and you that uh, I was aware, but I had to protect my party. So he is true to his conscience. The, the party first, the country, the country last. Well, that's where we are. That's the leadership we have. Professor, you ask why has there been a lack of revulsion uh, when this came to light? And when you ask whether we have become numb, one has to ask the question about the fourth estate, us in the media as an example, you have to ask the question of civil society because when it came to previous administration under Jacob Zuma, the media, civil society were very vocal in holding the previous administration's feet to the coals, as it were. So what has happened now? And, and again, what do you make of the fact that there was this lack of an outcry of, of, of a revulsion, as you put it, from these institutions when that particular audio leaked? Well, maybe that should be a subject for, for research. But all I know, one day, the day will dawn where people would ask themselves, where were we when all of this happened? Be careful not to give the Zuma administration more credence and respect as time goes on. I see a day where people will make reasonable comparison and some saying perhaps it was better under Zuma than what it is now. Look, it was far too easy to vilify, to denounce him, even for the lack of rain or whatever, right? But there is a lot of wrong that has been going on that is not being spoken about. And surely I'm immensely disappointed in what is going on right now in the country. And it's not about the ANC. It's about the people of South Africa, it's about the electorate. 
out of political experience or whatever. Look, here is Marvin Dex. He is on trial for what? For being a whistleblower? Really? And he must be crucified for that. And we all keep quiet. Something is not right with the society in which I live. So looking at Mervyn Dirks and, as you say, uh, basically being uh, persecuted right now for leading the charge, why do you think that Mervyn Dirks took it upon himself just reading uh, the lie of the land within uh, the political setup in the ANC at the moment? Uh, why do you think Mervyn Dirks took it upon himself to lead the charge in this instance against the sitting president? I, I, I'm, I'm always averse to be drawn into factional discourses that, that, that don't benefit the country. Because once you get into that space, even you are thinking, get, get reductionist and myopic. I'm seeing a man here who says, whether I belong to the ruling party or to a faction in the ruling party, Something is, rot is, is rotten in the city of Denmark, and it should be addressed. And more so if it comes from the citizen number one, in, in whom everybody has put trust, especially in the past, uh, in the years preceding his election to office. So Dex, for me, it's a patriot. The ANC politics, I don't want to get involved into that. I'm just saying, who, never mind the color of the T-shirts, when people speak that language, when Maseko and them spoke that language, some people lost their lives, their limbs. Some people lost their careers. And here is another one with the potential to lose that. I don't want to go into the space of ANC politics. I'm just saying, can we listen to what he's saying? Can really members of the ANC say he is wrong for raising this matter? Or he's simply wrong, perhaps, for he's perceived to be in a faction that is not dominant for the day. Professor Tefo, the State Security Agency will also be um, invited to submit information on allegations of the abuse of a slush fund uh, that was used for certain individuals' campaigns. Uh, the public protector will be invited because of the breach of executive code of ethics, uh, which falls under that officer's purview. And then you've got the Auditor General, who will also be invited to explain how the use of these funds was recorded and reported in the uh, various audits. Now, is this opening up a new can of worms for the president? Um, given what you say, um, we heard in that leaked audio that the president says the ANC will not go um, under under his watch, on his watch rather. And what does this mean in terms of the investigation and how it's likely to unfold? Uh, I, I still believe that uh, had the I should say, been elected by the people of South Africa and not by the ANC or that, but that happens, he would have made a far much better president. But in which times is forced in the name of preserving the party. Our apologies there. Um... <laughs> Therefore, I have to apologize. Uh, we are losing that connection there and um, unfortunate there that uh, we are unfortunately not getting a clear audio from uh, Professor Tifo because there's just uh, so much more uh, to be discussed around that. But let's just uh, try one more time before we give up on it. Uh, Professor Tifo, uh, let's just see if uh, that link is better now. Okay. Unfortunately not. And um, yeah. oh, at uh, such a crucial time in the conversation, unfortunately, that uh, a link letting us down. So we will try to follow up on it all the same because I think a very important issue um, under discussion and Scopa, of course, going ahead with this investigation after former ANC Member of Parliament uh, Mervyn Dirks actually uh, brought uh, the charge before Scopa to investigate uh, the, uh, uh, the utterances of uh, the president or it's an allegation.
information at this stage because we don't know. Nobody has uh, ever established the veracity of that uh, or the authenticity of that leaked audio. Uh, but we will certainly continue with this discussion and hopefully we'll be able to get uh, Professor Tifo back at a later stage. But at this point, we're going to park it for now. Analyst uh, Professor uh, Lisiba Tifo is from UNISA and we were discussing the decision made by SCOPA to invite President Ramaphosa to come and provide information with regard to that leaked audio that he's been associated with.